Number 10, Time Travel. In April 2017, an Oregon man's guilt led him to researching time travel. He wasn't doing it to be a hero, though. Instead, he wanted to reverse a horrible mistake. 30-year-old William Hargrove was done being single, so he signed up for a dating app and met 27-year-old Anna Repkina, a Russian woman who'd just broken up with her boyfriend of seven years. There was an instant spark between them, and within weeks, Repkina was ready to fly 5,500 miles from Moscow to Oregon for her new lover. Her 10-day trip was almost too good to be true. Hargrove proposed to her with a beautiful engagement ring. What she didn't know, though, was the fact that all this time, he'd been having an affair with his landlady, Michelle Chavez, who was married herself. So it turned into quite the love triangle. The landlady actually wanted him to leave Repkina and gave him an ultimatum to choose who he wanted. Just two days later, a groundskeeper near Alsea found the Russian bride's dead body near a remote logging road. It would have been impossible to trace her murder back to Hargrove, but he made the mistake of leaving a KFC receipt near her body, which led to his arrest. Interestingly, the man was researching time travel in the wake of her murder and kept frantically asking people if they knew any way of turning back time. On top of wanting to sell his soul for a time travel machine, he'd also written down magic spells to reverse the clock. Still, all that guilt didn't stop him from stopping by an ATM and withdrawing $800 from his fiancé's account. Even though he blamed Chavez for the murder, he was eventually put in prison for life. Number 9 Football Player Number 9 Football Player in April 2022, Portland police were called to a local bar at 1 a.m. regarding a shooting. Once there, they found a dead body. It was later identified as a 19-year-old college student named Amara Marluk, who was not only an on-campus leader, but an activist and a big part of Portland State University community. She was shot and killed right in front of Max Market near the cheerful tortoise bar. Here's where it gets interesting. The suspect who fled the scene that night actually confessed. 20-year-old Keenan Harpool was the murderer and turned himself in at the Deschutes County Sheriff's Office just hours after the shooting. He used to play on the school's football team but was no longer on the roster. No one even knew Harpole and Marluk had a relationship, and it was only after a thorough investigation that detectives reached a conclusion. According to them, it was a surefire case of domestic violence. Harpole was bulked into Multnomah County Jail on charges of second-degree murder and unlawful use of a weapon. Number 8. The Hitman We've seen countless cases of someone committing murder in self-defense, but what happened in Portland in 2006 will go down as the most insane act of defiance ever. 51-year-old Susan Walters had been married to her husband Michael Kuhnhausen for more than 15 years, but their relationship was far from perfect. In fact, Michael actually wanted to get rid of his wife without getting divorced. He devised a sneaky plan to hire a hitman to do his dirty work. He paid $50,000 to a crack addict named Edward Haffey and told him to bludgeon Susan to death. He was supposed to make it look like a burglary gone wrong. Haffey then broke into Walter's home and waited for her. As soon as she stepped in, he pounced and started hitting her with the hammer. He hadn't anticipated that she'd fight back too, though, because after 15 minutes of struggling, she managed to wrestle him to the ground and grab his throat. She then relaxed her grip, demanding to know who'd sent him, but as soon as he tried to break free, she choked him to death. Thankfully, it didn't take long for her to confirm her suspicions. She found a note in the hitman's backpack linking him to her husband, so Michael had no other option but to plead guilty to a charge of soliciting to commit aggravated murder. He spent eight years behind bars, and Susan, on the other hand, installed a security system and sued him for a million dollars just so he wouldn't pull something similar off again. Number 7. Person of Interest In November 2018, a defense attorney was named the prime suspect in his own wife's murder. 47-year-old Trisha Carver lived with her 42-year-old husband Lamar Carver and was reported missing by her family members in Hillsboro. Unfortunately, the search didn't pan out the way everyone had hoped, since the authorities found her dead body in a field near St. Paul that same day. Now, since the couple lived together, all of the fingers were pointing towards the defense attorney husband named Lamar. The Marion County Sheriff's Office even issued a search warrant to go into the home and look for clues. And when they arrived at the home, though, all they found was yet another dead body. It was indeed Lamar who, apparently, had self-inflicted gunshot wounds. And that being said, it's unclear how long he'd been dead before they discovered him. Of course, no suspects were set in stone, which makes the whole situation even more questionable. The assumption here was that he couldn't bear to get caught for killing his wife, and at the same time, he could have also shot himself to avoid suspicion. Regardless, everyone involved in the case was devastated. A spokesperson for the sheriff's office said that they've now got two families reeling, which makes this case so much worse. In fact, to this day, the case remains unsolved.
Number 6. The Author Ever heard of someone being suspiciously specific about something, almost as if they've experienced it for themselves? Yeah, well, it turns out the author of How to Murder Your Husband really knew what she was talking about. 71-year-old Nancy Crampton Brophy, a romance novelist, was probably speaking from experience when she wrote her essay since, apparently, she did actually kill her 63-year-old husband Daniel Brophy in 2018. According to the prosecutors, the murder was motivated by money issues and a life insurance policy. Here's the interesting part. She claimed she had no reason to kill her husband since their financial problems were largely solved by cashing in some of their retirement savings. To add to that, the essay was actually written in 2011, almost seven years before the actual murder. That being said, the writing was still very detailed, with listing options for committing an untraceable crime. So perhaps she'd been contemplating the murder for a decade. Then again, you can't do much against solid evidence since she owned the same model of gun used to kill her husband. Plus, she was also seen driving to and from the crime scene by witnesses. Besides, even though the police never found the actual gun that killed Brophy, it's believed that Nancy swapped out its barrel, used it in the shooting, and then threw it away. Nancy was eventually charged with second-degree murder. Number 5. Burn Pile In November 2018, Beaverton police got a report about some weird things happening in the neighborhood. When they got to the scene, they found what can only be described as a charred body. In fact, it was so badly crisp that it almost took two months to identify. It was Amy Lowe, who lived on Allen Boulevard with 42-year-old Alan Muniz and another man. Right after the identification, police went to the home to investigate with a search warrant, and it didn't take long for them to link Muniz to the murder. Apparently, he'd beaten the load to death and then chucked her into a burn pile in the backyard. He was probably hoping for her body to turn to ash, but thankfully, the neighbors realized the stench wasn't just part of some barbecue. Even though he was arrested on the spot, his real intentions were never really uncovered. Interestingly, this wasn't his first offense either. He'd recently been released from prison for first-degree robbery, so maybe he was just trying to one-up his own disturbing record. Muniz was later convicted of murder and first-degree abuse of a corpse. Number 4. The Voices Made Me Do It In October 2021, a meth-induced trip resulted in not one, but two murders in the Portland area. 45-year-old Michael Van Domlin, who lived in an apartment complex on Northwest 6th Avenue, wasn't in his right mind when he charged into a neighbor's apartment holding a 9mm gun in his pocket. Apparently, he was high on meth and heard voices in his head, telling him to do stuff. So instead of questioning anything, he went ahead and gunned down two people. Now, obviously, the other neighbors heard the shots and rushed to the hallway to see what the commotion was. One of them, after seeing the dead bodies, even ran into Michael on his way back. Not only that, but he asked the guy if he knew who fired the gun. His response? I did. Police quickly responded to the distress call. They arrested Michael straight away. He actually admitted to the murder while talking to the police as well, claiming the voices told him to kill people. His tone changed really quickly when he reached court. He pleaded not guilty. But by then, though, it was already too late because he was charged with two counts of first-degree murder. Number 3. Refrigerated In September 2021, three people were arrested after the body of a 24-year-old was found in a refrigerator. The Medford police got a call about an assault on Royal Avenue in the middle of the day. And while there wasn't anything too suspicious going on, they did see someone run into a nearby apartment. They detained the suspicious person and later found a dead body inside their fridge. Identified as Aaron Stitt, the body had severe skull fractures, as if he'd been beaten by a hammer. When it initially seemed like a classic homicide, the case turned into a Pandora's box of possibilities after they realized that the first suspect wasn't even the apartment's owner. Instead, it belonged to 20-year-old Bryson Schofield, who was arrested with 25-year-old Austin McLeod and his younger brother Dylan. Not only that, but police also found firearms on the property, only by chance though, because the suspects tried very hard to clean the scene of any evidence. Here's the fascinating part. Apparently, Stitt stole from one of his killers before the incident, and they wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine by robbing him. But clearly, something went horribly wrong. All three suspects were charged with murder, as well as concealment of evidence. Number 2. The All-Father When an Oregon medical student was asked to donate sperm in the late 80s, he was promised that only five kids would be born, all far away from him. But little did he know he'd end up becoming a father to nearly a whole football squad. In 2019, Dr. Bryce Cleary filed a $5.25 million lawsuit against Oregon Health and Science University, claiming that they didn't honor their promise of only using his sperm for East Coast residents. Instead, most of it was used for kids in Oregon. The five children he was promised back in 89? Well, it turns out his juices were potent enough for over 17 babies. The majority of the children went to school, church, or social functions with each other 
without even realizing they were half-siblings. Cleary claimed that he was a victim of fraud and suffered emotional distress after hearing about the births. He found out about the other kids when a couple of them tracked him down through Ancestry.com. It was only when he sent off his own DNA to the website that he realized he was a father to at least 17 kids. Yeah, that's not really a great look, but hey, at least he can claim to be one of the most fertile men in Oregon. Number 1. Dumped in a Landfill In August 2022, a Washington County woman was reported missing, and only four days later, her body was found dead in a landfill dumpster. 27-year-old Kaylee Birdzo was in an abusive relationship with 31-year-old Fabian Hernandez. While she didn't want to be with him anymore, she couldn't leave him because he'd regularly threatened to do something if she did. Kaylee also couldn't run away because her boyfriend lived with her and watched her, so even if she wanted to escape, she wouldn't have been able to. To make things worse, Fabian carried a firearm all the time, and sadly, it proved to be the cause of Kaylee's death. She'd been traveling through a rural area in her Jeep and stopped one night to get some shut-eye. Little did she know, though, that this was a permanent slumber. Fabian, for some reason, pulled the gun out and shot her several times. The gun he used was a large-caliber revolver. He then dragged her body to the Coffin Butte landfill in Corvallis and threw it in a dumpster. Obviously, it wasn't hard for someone to realize there was a rotting, smelly corpse in the dumpster, especially with the smell of decomposing flesh in the air. It didn't take long for police to get to the scene and confirm it was Kaylee. As a result, Fabian was arrested and charged with second-degree murder for his crimes. Thanks for watching. Would you rather be a parent to 17 unknown kids or be one of the half siblings? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time on the Bad Badger.